Hey guys, welcome to the Farm and Pastor's Wife. Tonight we're doing one of our common suppers that we hey do all guys. the time. What's for supper, Mom? Salmon patties. Sam fried salmon patties? Macaroni and cheese. Oh yeah. And a can of peas. Your new macaroni and cheese? Yes, my new macaroni and cheese. Pay attention guys, this is really good. All right, stay tuned. Hey guys, welcome to the Farm and Pastor's Wife. Tonight we're having something you've seen me make probably a hundred times, but my son-in-law has requested it, but we're switching up our side dishes a little bit. If you watched our Sunday video, we are we made macaroni and cheese, and I made it a little different. I called it everything but the kitchen sink macaroni and cheese. Well, he has requested that instead of stewed potatoes. Now, Isaac is still begging for the stewed potatoes, so I told him if he wants stewed potatoes, he's going to have to run to the store for me. But, so I'm just going to go ahead and make this macaroni and cheese, and I'm going to tell you what I've done so far, and we'll put it together, and I'll have it ready to go in the oven when it comes time to cook supper. I like doing things ahead of time and getting it done. Okay, guys, so right here... I have cooked up, I started with two cups of dry macaroni noodles, just regular dry macaroni noodles. I boiled them for the full amount of time that it says. I did 11 minutes. Um, and that just keeps, that helps keep your macaroni and cheese moist when you serve it. Uh, because if you still left a little um, firmness to the macaroni it's going to soak up all the stuff while you um, you know while it's baking and so forth so to that I tried to shred some Velveeta cheese but my Velveeta cheese was at room temperature <laughs> so it didn't work now you can use American and I'm just putting like what a half a cup maybe I mean, just a small amount. You don't have to use Velveeta if you're opposed to like processed cheese and stuff. I totally get it. Last time I made it, I used American cheese. Um, and and I, I do a mixture of cheeses. You can use whatever you want. So I'm going to mix in this Velveeta real quick. I also shredded up a good amount of... I'm going to say I did a cup and a half of this cheese, and I think this is a, like a medium cheddar. And um, so I'm going to throw it in here so it can be melting. And I'm going to shred up a little bit more for the top. And just for a little sharpness, I need a better spoon. Just for a little sharpness, I'm going to add in um, a little store-bought shredded. Um, sharp cheddar cheese. So let me grab that and I'll bring you guys right back. Okay, so I'm just going to put in just a small handful of this sh sharp cheddar cheese and we'll add a little bit along with the other to the top for the topping, but that'll be done, you know, halfway through or almost to the end actually of the baking process. Okay, so you can see the cheese is not melting you know, right yet. I mean, it's melting a little bit, but it's not creamy yet. And it probably won't be until we bake it. So I'm going to add some heavy cream to this. And I may add a little bit of milk later on um, for some extra creaminess. Ooh, I've got my windows open, y'all and stuff flying. And I have an attic fan. Do y'all have an attic fan? Oh my goodness, that is the best thing since sliced bread is an attic fan. I love my windows open and I love that attic fan going. All right, so we're also gonna add in here some scoops of sour cream. In fact, I think I'm gonna, I'm just gonna go in with the rest of this container and I'm going to pour, you know how sour cream makes that little juice? We're going to pour it in there too. All 
All right, there's really no measurements. That's probably a half a cup, a little more than a half a cup, a generous half a cup. <laughs> All right, so now we are also going to add some eggs. Now, I got a lot of questions about the eggs. The eggs just do something extremely special in this macaroni and cheese. Um, it, it is a binder, but yet a fluffer. It, it kind of gives it that souffle-like texture. It just does something really special. A lot of people have said, I have never heard of putting eggs in macaroni and cheese. And this recipe is kind of adapted from Paula Dean. Um, she does put ground mustard in hers as well. Um, I do not have any ground mustard that I could find. And to me, it's just not as, it's just not so important to hunt for it. So, what you doing, Pop? Just checking things out. He's checking. I'm gonna adjust your camera. You're adjusting my camera. I need a cameraman. Is that, is that Don't you need a full-time job? Yeah. yeah. I have a full-time job. Don't you need another full-time job? I have job? two full-time jobs. Don't you need a third? No. You can be my cameraman. I'm a full-time pastor and a full-time farmer. Okay, now the reason I save the eggs for last is I don't want to scramble them with the hot noodles. So by me adding the cheeses, adding the sour cream, adding the milk, I've cooled it down enough where the eggs are not going to scramble. And I just kind of beat them up in here. We don't believe in beating stuff up. Well, we, we scrambled it up. Yeah, we're passive. <laughs> well, we're not. Okay. It's got raw egg in it. Yeah, but we're going to bake it. Oh. We're going to bake it. Okay, y'all, I've got to go outside and grab one of my wonderful tin pans that I use all the time. And then I'm just going to set this aside until it's time to bake. And when I bake it, I'm going to bake it at 350, probably for about 30 minutes. I'll pull it out, put a topping of cheese over it, and stick it back in the oven until that melts. And then we will have delicious macaroni and cheese to go with our salmon patties. All right, there it is. I'm just going to cover it in tin foil and wait for time for supper. We'll stick it in the oven, like I said, at 350. And um, then we'll pull it out, put some more cheese on top, stick it back in, and then we'll have a delicious side dish to go with our salmon patties. Okay, guys, now on to our salmon patties. Um, I use the boneless skinless. It is cheaper to buy the red can that has the bones and the skin in it, and you just pull that out. I have a thing with bones. It's like finding a hair for me and food. So I just use this kind. Um, you still may find a little bone here and there, but not anything like the bread can. So what I do is I take the lid and I squeeze it down and I get all the juice out. I drain all the juice. Um, and I'm going to use for my family because there's a bunch of us. We love this. This is our favorite, one of our favorite meals. I do this meal all the time. I know you've seen it a hundred times on my channel, but, um, we are first the new folks. <laughs> We're going to do it again. And mine are just plain Jane. I don't add onion, but you surely could. If you wanted to add some flavor, you surely could add onion, pimentos, whatever you wanted to, to this. Our salmon patties are just plain Jane. So I'm actually going to be using seven of these cans of salmon. I'm going to squeeze, open them, squeeze them, drain them, and then put them in this bowl right here. I'm going to go grab my other tripod so you can see what I'm doing. And... Um, but you want as much of the moisture and liquid out as you can possibly get. So I'm going to do this to the other six cans and I'll be right back. Okay guys, I've got all the cans of salmon in here, all seven cans. Um, they're in here. Let me explain the recipe a little bit. I'm doing a little more than double my recipe, but I will put my normal recipe which is just three cans down in the description you multiply it if you're going to dub if you're going to fix more we've just gotten to where we like having leftovers 
Jamie loves these. Isaac loves these. I love these. Um, I doubt we have leftovers. <laughs> but I always fix enough to hopefully have a, at least a midnight snack, if not breakfast the next morning. But, and yes, salmon patties for breakfast. It's delicious. So, I'm going to be actually doing a little bit more than doubling the recipe. So, if it looks like, wait, she didn't double that great. It's because I'm actually doing a little bit more. But I'm going to get the camera set up in a new, another spot so you can hopefully see what I'm doing better. But you'll be able to see my sink and my dirty dishes. But, oh well. Okay, so for three cans of salmon, I use three heaping scoops of cornmeal and one heaping scoop of flour. I'm gonna do, and I'm doubling it plus some tonight. Um, the cornmeal is the breading. And a lot of people use crackers or breadcrumbs. The cornmeal just gives it, oh, it's this nice crusty outside. The inside is still soft, but the outside is this crusty, crunch to it the cornmeal just does something special now like i said you can add anything you want into this if you like onions or garlic or whatever you go right ahead i am going to add some salt and some pepper you could add garlic powder we like ours and i, I i'm a i'm a tasty girl like i like flavor and and spices and stuff like that. But in my salmon patties, I want them just plain Jane. But you do what you want. Okay, so when I say a heaping tablespoon, I mean a heaping tablespoon. So I'm gonna do three of those for three cans. So really one big heaping tablespoon per can. And I did seven cans, so I'm gonna do Seven heaping to I gotta count, sorry. Three, <laughs> four, five, six, seven. Okay. And and that's just regular like your cornmeal, your tend to bake or, or whatever cornmeal uh, mix you use. Now don't use jiffy because that's sweet. You don't want no sweet cornmeal stuff in there. Alright, so I'm gonna use Two heaping tablespoons of flour. Get out of there. And a leveled off one for that seventh can. <laughs> and it's not going to hurt it if you put a little less or a little more. It's not going to hurt it. Um, so I'm just going to give this a kind of stir around real quick just kind of mixing it up now I've taken my rings off my rings are off so that's good and I'm gonna crack two eggs in here and depending on if it's excessively dry and not holding together I may add a third one but we'll see. Um, we'll see. If it's holding together good, then I won't need a third egg. So this is when I take a little time and just see if it's gonna hold together. I take one in my hand And you can see it's going to hold together perfectly. All right, so I don't have my oil ready. I just wanted to get this ready and set aside. You don't have to set it aside. It's ready to fry right now. So I'm going to clean up. I'm kind of ahead of schedule as usual. Well, I'm either really, really ahead or really, really behind. Today happens to be ahead. But I'm going to stick the macaroni and cheese in the oven. Gonna get my oil out, my frying pan out, clean up, 
and then we'll be ready to fry these salmon patties. Okay, y'all, it is time to start frying the salmon patties. I need to test my oil. Whoops. I need to test my oil and make sure it's good. So I'm just going to take just a little pinch of the salmon mixture. And it's perfect. It's sizzling perfectly. So I've already got a few made. And I'm actually, now that I've got it hot, I'm going to turn it down just a little bit. went ahead and got a few made. And I'm going to keep making them. I'm going to move my bowl over here. usually get about nine in this frying pan and y'all I normally yes I like to use my cast iron but for my salmon patties I love this stainless steel it is just amazing they don't burn well I mean they can burn if I leave them or if I got the grease you know if I left it on high I always try to like get the the grease you know warm good and hot and then I turn it down we're wanting to see that good pretty crust that that cornmeal is going to make and since I got just a little bit of room I'm going to do a kind of a smaller one over here in this area and let me get a spatula and I can manipulate them around and maybe I'll add in another one I'll grab this one since it's handy might could get one but I'm not gonna squeeze it I'm just gonna let them sit right there and get good and kind of toasty brown it only takes maybe two minutes on one side two to three minutes on one side we'll flip it do it two to three minutes on that side and then they are done um, and usually when I flip it I kind of mash it because um, a little bit Look at that golden brown. I'm going to leave it just another minute or two or a few seconds. Not really a minute, but a few seconds. And we'll start turning them. That one was just almost perfect. And if I don't mind sticking my hand near it. Like, I don't mind turning it like this. Holding it with one hand and then flipping it with the other. But if you don't like doing that, get you another utensil, any kind, a spoon, another spatula, or whatever, and just use that. And we're just going to go around in the circle and flip them. I do get burnt occasionally. <laughs> it's not unheard of. Okay, so now I'm going to kind of mash these down just a little bit, and then we'll turn these other ones. And y'all, that is the perfect color of a salmon patty right there. Perfect. All right. So I've got a plate, a platter actually, over here with a paper towel on it ready to take these up. My macaroni and cheese is done. So I'm going to cut my oven off. My tea's made. The only thing i got to do is open my can of peas. I'm just going to open a store-bought can of peas. And I'm going to do that right now. Um, normally I would do it on the stove and stick a little pat of butter in it, but I'm not doing that today because we're in a hurry. I'll do it in a bowl. 
I'll put a pat of butter in it, in the bowl, and stick it in the microwave. And if you find that you've turned your oil down too much, you can always turn it right back up. But I like to start it out with it hot, turn it down to a medium. I think it just fries up perfect. It gets the inside done. It gets the outside brown. I think that just works perfectly when you start it on high and then turn it down to like a medium. I think I overcooked my macaroni a little bit. But that's okay. We, Bright and I ran over to the chicken houses. We took Judah and ran over to check some things out at the chicken houses. And, uh, and then I came back and I forgot they were in the oven. Okay, so I've got, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I got nine in here and I've probably got three good size ones left. All right. Well, when I get these out, I'll show you what they look like. Okay, y'all. Um, I've got the other, the camera just does not do this justice, the color of it, but they are so golden brown. I've got um, nine here and I was able to get five small ones out of what I had left and so I chose to go that route all right guys I'll bring you back in just a little bit and it'll be time for supper okay there they are they're ready I'll meet you guys in the dining room as our family sits down for dinner. Um, tonight is a quick, easy night, so we're eating off paper plates tonight. It's nothing fancy. So we'll meet you in there in just a second. Okay, guys, here is Brian's plate. Um, he'll be in here in just a minute. I did get the top cheese, the cheese I sprinkled on top. I left it in and forgot it. <laughs> so we're, I'm just peeling that off, but the chicken, I mean, the macaroni and cheese underneath is delicious. So, okay, all right. They'll be in here in just a minute. Okay, guys, everybody's getting settled and ready, and Levi's ready to eat. Levi's ready to eat. <laughs> All right, Papa, tell us what you think. All right, guys, macaroni and cheese, garden peas, which <laughs> y'all know that I call dog ticks, <laughs> and salmon patties. Break it in half so they can see what it looks right like there. inside. It is crunchy on the outside, good and moist and delicious on the inside. Now, Leslie, put some little cornmeal in hers, right? Mm -hmm. On the outside. Really good. Good, crispy. Perfect salmon patty. Perfect salmon patty. The macaroni and cheese, really good. I've already been nibbling on it. <laughs> so he's not, he doesn't have the wow factor because he's already been in it. Very cheesy, very good. Have you done this for him yet? Leslie? I did it on the, our Sunday lunch. The, but video really really good some women in the south they don't use cornmeal on theirs they just use all bread and or crackers and flour or crackers but the good thing about the cornmeal is it gives that little crunchy uh outside outside so yeah it helps hold the patty together mm -hmm. once it starts frying if you can't interpret that she'll tell you why <laughs> uh, yes he was talking with his mouth full <laughs> All right, guys, we're going to eat. Judah's eating already, so um, he's ready to eat his chicken nugget is what he calls it. And Levi's over there nibbling, and everybody is situated. And this is the meal that Jamie down there has requested. Mm -hmm. Delicious. Delicious. And let me show you what Jamie does on his salmon patty. Yellow mustard. It's mustard. And so now Bryant is trying the yellow mustard. Gives it a little twang. <laughs> All right, guys. Yeah. They it just twangs my buds. <laughs> it just twangs my buds. All right, that was from a Christmas play that we did at church. That line. 
All right, guys. I'll be back in just a second to tell you goodbye because I have something else to tell you about.